the treasury division of a bank is perhaps the single most important and critical division of a bank not just from the bank's perspective but even from the regulator's point of view hello everybody and welcome to the youtube channel banking funders i'm your learning partner sushila hariharan and in today's session we are going to take an overview not a deep dive an overview of what happens inside a bank's dealing room sometime in 2020 i was conducting a online program for the back office settlements of a large investment bank based in bengaluru and i was asked this question why are the dealing rooms so active why do we have so much of volume of trades from the treasury division what is it that they do and why are they important to us thank you so much anuj for asking this question and this led me to make this presentation on what happens inside the treasury division of a bank a bank's dealing room shows images throws up images like this high energy there are nervous traders who are constantly pacing the dealing room always on their toes there are screaming quotes where prices are quoted in pips that means cents to a dollar paise to a dollar and any price movement causes millions of dollars of profits or losses to the bank flashing screens each screen showing prices across different markets or different prices for different asset classes and more what more the clocks which show different time zones across the world yes indeed the bank's dealing room is one very very active hyper energy place in a typical bank the dealing room is bifurcated into two desks the fx desk and the bond and the money desk so the treasury operations typically are conducted as an integrated function of two separate desks the first one is the foreign exchange desk and the second one is the bond and the money desk in some banks the uh, money markets are money market activities are fairly large uh, and that depends upon the scale of operations of the bank and therefore the bond and money desk also could be segregated with separate dealers for the bond market and separate dealers for the money market uh, that implies that there are separate dealers for the long term fixed income market and separate dealers for the short term money market let's take a look of what happens at the fx dealing desk the fx dealing desk largely deals in currency trading okay as you know the foreign exchange market is the highest in volumes market across the world running into trillions of dollars and that creates a significant impact on the liquidity and profitability of the bank the fx trades itself are bifurcated into two categories the first one is the spot market trades the second one is the forward market trades in the upcoming slides we're going to take a look at spot market trades and what are forward market trades in another presentation so that we understand what would happen if the prices move in either of these markets and finally in the fx desk there are uh, product designers you know costume designers product designers who design structured products interest rate swaps currency swaps which are then offered to many of the banks high net worth individuals private banking clients gold clients etc so the fx dealing desk involves not just traditional spot market trading it also involves foreign market trades forward market trades structured products irs etc what is a spot trade the spot trades in fx market are the largest volume of trades within the fx market in that category we have the highest volume of currency pair that is traded globally which is the usd euro or the euro usd uh, if you look at the new york markets or the london markets the euro usd is the highest volume currency pair in india the highest volume currency pair that is traded is the usd inr the spot trades are settled on t plus 2 you will understand what is the meaning of t plus 2 in, in the upcoming slides this is called as the fx spot trade fx market in the spot trade is largely an otc market otc standing for over the counter 
there is no centralized exchange like how we have in the stock stock markets you have a centralized exchange through which trades are routed in the case of uh, fx markets there is no centralized exchange the trades are directly done from bank to bank as it is an otc market we always get quotes that is the rate of the currency fx quotes are very very peculiar in nature so let's have a look at how are these quotes stated okay currencies are quoted in pairs in a euro dollar quote for example you can see two currencies that are mentioned eur that is euro and usd that is us dollar so in this case of a euro dollar the former currency is called as the base currency and the latter currency is called as the reference currency the former currency is eur that is the base euro and the latter currency is the usd that is the reference currency euro dollar is continuing the extension of in extending upon the same topic euro dollar is equal to 1.1286 this implies that 1 euro is equal to usd 1.1286 we can always flip it around and ask what is usd euro and then you have to do a division of 1 divided by 1.1286 you'll get it you'll get the answer so you can flip the currency pairs but accordingly if you flip the currency pair according to the code that is given you need to carry out the mathematical operation as well accordingly so to review the same slide fx quotes are quoted in pairs that's why they are peculiar in nature in a euro dollar quote in a euro usd quote euro is the base currency usd is a reference currency if the euro usd rate is 1.1286 it means euro 1 is equal to usd 1.1286 let's continue with the exploration of fx quotes let's say the quote provided by the bank is euro usd 1.1286 dash 1.1292 this means the bank will buy euro at 1.1286 and the bank will sell euros at 1.1292 so whenever we give a rate of foreign exchange the rates are always against the base currency okay so in this case for example the bid rate is the rate at which the bank will by the base the ask rate is the rate at which the bank will sell the base currency to review this again if the bid rate if the rate is quoted as euro dash usd is equal to 1.128692 the bid rate is 1.1286 the ask rate is 1.1292 that means the bank will buy euros at 1.1286 the bank will sell euros at 1.1292 why is there a difference between the two of them obviously the bank will buy at a lower rate and the bank will sell at a higher rate the bank will buy the base at a lower rate the bank will sell the base at a higher rate the euro dollar rate let's extend this example the euro euro usd rate is 1.1286 1.1292 it's not that i've forgotten to write 1.12 in the fx markets trades take place in pips like i mentioned to you cent to a do dollar paise to a dollar rupee quote right over here the big figure is 1.12 the pips are 86 and 92 the difference between the two of them the bid and the ask price is called as spread so the bid ask spread is the difference between the ask rate and the bid rate since ask rate is always higher than the bid rate like it ought to be we subtract the the 1.1286 from 1.1292 we get a difference of 6 pips that's how narrow the quotes are in the fx markets 
Spot trades are trades that get settled on a spot basis. The trade date is let's say T, the spot date is S, alphabetically globally accepted. Spot trades imply that settlement of currencies take place after two working days. So if there's a Saturday, Sunday in between, those are not working days in the FX markets, the settlement gets postponed to the next working day. Settlement implies the exchange of currency, wherein we exchange one currency for the other. Settlement is across the border. It takes place in different currencies, amongst different banks, in different countries, and therefore involves Nostro account banking. When we do a presentation on uh, foreign exchange trades and settlements, we'll be taking a look at what happens in Nostro accounts. Wow, that's a lot for the FX desk, but still a very, very minute part only has been covered in this slides. The bond and the money desk. The bond desk deals in GSEX, that is Government of India Securities and Corporate Bonds. These are largely rupee denominated securities and the primary reason it is uh, trading in this is because they have to earn some profits on the trading. The bond market is also an OTC market, okay? That is over the counter market. So when we do our uh, program on fixed income securities, we will be discussing about how trades, how, how rates are quoted in the bond market. Much of the activity that happens in the bond desk is for meeting the requirements of SLR, that is the statutory liquidity ratio. As you know, SLR is, uh, has to be maintained by all banks operating in India. This is a certain percentage of the net demand and time liabilities and SLR investments are largely government securities. Trading in bonds are largely conducted for profits and most importantly, for liquidity management. If you look at the uh, balance sheets of some of the private sector banks in India, the trading in bonds, the portfolio is much higher than the loan portfolio. But that's another topic, another day. <laughs> the bond and the money desk has another division called as a money desk, which deals in the money markets. The money market desk trades in treasury bills, that is the short term securities issued by the government and therefore the usage of the word treasury. They also in trade in commercial paper issued by corporates, certificates of deposits issued by banks and financial institutions. And the money market desk also conducts several repo trades in the call and money market. Repo trades standing for repurchase agreements. I have already uploaded a presentation on repo trades. You may please have a look at that. I will share the link of the repo trade presentation in the uh, link below. The money market desk is responsible for maintenance of CRR. In fact, if a bank defaults in CRR maintenance, the RBI directly penalizes the bank, okay, at very hefty rates for not maintenance. And within the bank, the treasury head is picked up and uh, shouted at for not performing the duty of doing a simple job of report, maintaining and reporting the CRR. The money market is an OTC market. So all these instruments, treasury bills, commercial paper, certificates of deposits and repo trades take place in a decentralized manner directly between broker to broker or bank to bank, etc. There is no centralized exchange. Trades in money markets are largely interbank in nature. This is because money market volumes, uh, the size of each transaction runs into 50 lakhs uh, rupees or 50 crore rupees, depending upon the face value. And therefore, uh, the size of the market may be large, but the number of participants is restricted to financial institutions, asset management companies, pension funds, hedge funds, and so on. The dealing room has significant amount of responsibilities. The first one is all statutory reserves.
pardon me all statutory reserves are to be maintained as already mentioned they are responsible for maintenance of both crr and slr the treasury profits are a major contributor to a bank's revenues the maintenance of capital has to be maintained capital adequacy as per basel 3 regulations i have already uploaded a video on 81 bonds and uh, basel 3 regulations and finally the dealing room is also responsible for maintenance of all assets liability management so the bank does not face any liquidity crisis if you like the content please click share subscribe and share your comments thank you so much for watching this video and i will be uploading soon a video on campus interviews so that you get prepared to face the campus interviews that take place across mba colleges thank you so much